Hello, hello. Elizabeth's already here. We're we're ready to go. Let's do this. <laughs> we were just talking backstage. We've both finished this book um very recently. Monique, when did you finish? Um, I'm gonna say 59 minutes for 200, Alex. <laughs> That's, um, I finished about 10 minutes ago, so right. we're, uh, yeah, it is nice and top of the brain, fresh on the dome, as Christine would say. Yes. Um, who are you? Where did, where did you come from before we Hello. get into this? I am Mo, short for Monique. I'm from the Rumi's Digest, you know, we're out here on the West Coast. So we're out here. here. Post, yeah. I, I know. I asked you, I'm like, do you want to do seven o'clock? Because I know that's not super late for you. I know. <laughs> I was like, this perfect. is great. I was like, I was like, okay, let me get my schedule. And it's at seven o'clock. It's perfect time. Yeah, easy peasy. Just in the nick of time. Yeah, I wasn't even worried. I was I wasn't stressed. <laughs> Who's sweating? Not me. <laughs> no. Easiest thing ever. Um, we are discussing. The Memory Librarian by the lovely Janelle Monet, um, which like stunning, luxurious cover, obsessed, love the, the gold detail, which is a collection of like sci-fi Afrofuturist stories of Janelle Monet and the collaborators that pairs with um, Dirty Computer, her album, which have you listened to the album? I have actually listened to it 30 minutes ago. What? <laughs> Perfect. We're prepared. Well, I prepared. Okay. I never doubted. I never doubted. I, I have all the faith in the world. Invite it back. Okay. I'm, let me be invited back. <laughs> yes. Next month? No, just kidding. No, wait, wait, let me prepare. <laughs> um, what did you think? Like overall, broad thoughts for this of the album or the book? A both. Both. I love the album. Cool. I actually think I might like the. They do different things. The book was good. The book was good. Uh huh. Uh huh. Do you have a rating yet, or is it too fresh? I, I think I'm going towards a four, like round it up. Mm -hmm. But I didn't like. I didn't love all the stories. Yeah, that's the hard thing about a story collection. Yeah. It's like some of them. I was like, wow, that really got me. Like that five star story. But then. Yeah. A couple of the others, I was like, "What? What was the reason?" Yes. <laughs> like, what? What did we do here? Um, so I'm, I'm in the same boat. I think I might, I might land on a four. I really liked the last story. That's the most fresh. Oh So, yeah. I feel like I'm leaning towards a four, maybe a three in that in that range. I was heavy on a three, but um, time box, both time boxes saved it for me. Yes, those were my favorite two, also. Yes. The two time. I thought that they were gonna be the same characters, but I like that it was similar themes, but different characters in those. Yeah, agreed. I thought. You, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say that you were talking about the album doing different things in the book. The album just seemed much, just like a good time, you know. Like we're talking about some heavy content themes, but like it still seemed kind of celebratory. In a yes. Lot of like a fun party, you know? <laughs> I know, I did, I know exactly what you mean. It was like the like, the vibes were high, but the the content was serious. Yeah. And I think the book did a good job like expanding on some of it, but like, I still had questions about the world that was, you know, being like the new, what is it, the new, New Dawn. Yeah, thank you. New Dawn. I was like, oh, Lord. It took me half the book to realize that they were talking about New York. I think only because in one of the stories, they said, oh, this is what New York is supposed to be like. And I it just had this great epiphany moment. But You're then like, I was like, oh, was I supposed to know this the whole time? <laughs> so I did not figure it out until then. I don't think I don't think I really pictured I, I pictured a metropolis, but I don't think I pictured New York City until until probably like save changes. And I was like, oh, this is a Pacific street. I mental know. I think that's the one too, where they have like that big, like secret block party. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's where it was explicitly said like, oh, this is, this is how New York was. Um, okay. And everything came together, but it was weird because I feel like if I had known that it was New York the whole time, I would have imagined it completely differently. That is um, 
Maybe that was part of the charm, though. Maybe I wasn't supposed to know. Yeah, I didn't really picture New York the whole time, except for that one story. So maybe that is what was supposed to happen. I guess that's fair. How did you feel about the the title story, Memory Librarian? That one was, I think, the most fleshed out. Yeah, I, I feel like it was the longest, too. It was the longest. It was, uh, I think it was, was 180 pages, maybe? Let me move it up. It might have been close to that, like a hundred something. I definitely remember being like, if I can read this by this amount of time, <laughs> my schedule will allow me to take two hours to focus on other things. By the transitive property of edition. Yeah. <laughs> I think maybe it was 80. Maybe it was 80 pages. I think it yeah. was wrong. What was Nevermind? Why don't I even remember what that was? Nevermind was the one oh. I didn't really love. That was the the pink hotel. Yeah, like Which I understand it's like a you know a paradise society away from our society, but I was just I didn't I don't know. I get you. Yeah. Which is odd because I feel like that's the one that ties the closest to the album, or maybe I'm just like, oh, there's the pink hotel and there's the pink song. Um, and yeah. I felt like I really liked the themes and the setting a lot more than I actually did the the plot of the movie. You know, like what yes. happened? That's, yes. What That's happened? Why, exactly. I was like, oh, we got Jane. We have everyone here right. on the album. But this story <laughs> is not really hitting it out of the park for me. It was good. Like points were made. But uh, Christine's here. Hi, Christine. <laughs> hey. <laughs> but yeah, points were made. Anyway. Yeah, it was it was kind of funky. I I really I feel like I really wanted to like that one because there was so much that was like being said um, mm -hmm. about this this hotel or this commune of like women off of the path, and there was our non-binary character who felt kind of ostracized. And then there was this like turf who was like, you don't belong here. This is no longer a safe space for women. And like, that was like not a, a twist that I loved, yeah. um, but I get what it was going for. And then there was this whole very dramatic, like um, sabotage raid Saboteur. thing that happened yeah. too. What is going on? I, that was, I think my least favorite story of the bunch i i agree with you with everything you said i was like it had so much potential but it was just kind of clunky i don't know but every like the, the, it was i was rooting for it but it was not it is in the ranking of all the stories it was my least favorite we were all rooting for you wait okay now what would be the ranking of your stories that i would love to know there's only like five yes okay i would we do, have i will do time box and then I'll do time box altered. Uh huh. Save changes. The memory, the memory librarian. And never mind. Okay. I, I know. Feel like mine is similar, mostly because never mind is at the end. Um, but I think the t two time box ones are at the top, but switched. I think time box altered is my favorite, uh -huh. and then time box. And then memory librarian, and then save changes, and then never mind. Yeah, never mind was last, unfortunately for her. <laughs> for them. But um. <laughs> hello, hello. Hi. I listened to the dirty computer while reading because I'm an overachiever. Have I finished yet? No. <laughs> it is the effort that counts. Always slow reading short story collections. I know. I really marathoned it because I started it yesterday, um, but it's fine. Usually I like to read like one story a day. Uh, let it marinate. Let it, yeah, let it really, really soak into the brain noodle. Jean's here. Hello. Hi. Didn't read it, but enjoying the reviews. You know? Well, now you can decide if you want to read it. Yeah. It's a good old, good old time. What do you think? Should we walk through like each of the stories? Just I'm down. Really, really take a bite? 
Okay. Yeah, because I have some questions because I don't even know if I understood some of the endings. I'm like, I was thinking about that too. Like with story collections, I haven't read a story collection in a while since like um, whichever one we read for Found in Translation, which was in like maybe March. And okay. the thing with story collections is like there's like so many endings over the course of the book instead of a normal novel where it's like yeah. beginning, middle, and end. That's it. As opposed yeah. to five of each in the span of 300 pages. So I, there was like this whiplash effect uh, <laughs> towards the end for me. Which one do you feel like, or more than one, do you feel like you have questions? For sure, time box. I think mainly time box, possibly save changes. Everything else seemed kind of, you know, clear. Memory librarian, time altered. Time box all but like okay. time box. We can get to it though. Whenever oh. we get to it. <laughs> gotcha. I know. I'm trying to. Th I think you're right. Like those. Those two was like. <laughs> what just happened? But, yeah, the ending. I was like, I really reread the end of Time Box a couple of times. I was like, okay, where <laughs> did they go? What is going on with the doorknob? The wood shavings. Like I was just like, like I'm trying, I was like, where's the toolbox going? And the Who's left where? I know. That's why I got excited when I saw there was another time box. Because I was like, oh, maybe we'll get the answer. Closure. <laughs> but then it was a little, that was more hopeful. I, I wasn't expecting that one. So I was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that one was a, a little bit weird. Um, memory librarian. I feel like we maybe just take it take from the top, Joe. Um, it was the longest one. It was the title story. Do you feel like it did a good job setting setting the tone setting the the feel for the rest of the book i do i think it helped the build the world um helped me understand like what con was a dirty computer you know yeah like, like all the terms that kind of were used in a lot of the other stories i think the new rally librarian had the most cohesive definition of what they are going to be like what they mean so I appreciate that. Yeah, it never felt like we were getting a bunch of exposition, but mm -hmm. it, it's like we we definitely were just like dropped into this new dawn realm yeah. um, and just said, okay, go crazy. Like learn it all, soak it all up. Um, our main character, what was her name? Not D. Yes. that was the, that Sesset? was the assistant. Sesset. Oh yeah, Sesset. Um, which I thought was interesting where eventually we learned that her memories were wiped in order to become a memory librarian. And then she got to choose her name. Mm -hmm. And then she chose like the Egyptian goddess of memory or something like that. I'm like, that yeah. was very on the nose and very badass, And I respect it. <laughs> um, but it was like such a weird story about it just like set the tone of, okay, there's going to be a lot of people that don't fit into these like nice clean little boxes with bows on top uh even though that's like what this new culture wants mm -hmm. even though she's within that those people in power as like the librarian director and is supposed to enforce all of those things and memories mm -hmm. uh even though she also like diverges yeah, from so many of those things um i thought it was a really cool duality to like focus on her as the character yeah it was a smart move to put this one first, for sure. Um, I think, I liked, I think, was it Athela, Anthea? Alethea? Alethea, Alethea. They just called her Leaf, which I yeah. thought was funny. <laughs> was like, there's so many names, but um, yeah, I liked that relationship dynamic. It was very interesting to see how, um, De not Deidre, uh, Sishet was able to realize how important she was just from like meeting her one that one time or like off chance. Yeah, I liked where um, maybe halfway or towards the end of that first story, she like re audits her own memories mm -hmm. and is like, what? They've been tampered with. Yeah. Why did someone tamper with my memories? And then realizes it was me. I tampered with my own memories. That was like such a cool twist. Like a, in a way, it felt like a 
a play on a very classic overdone sci-fi trope, but in like a really smart, self-aware way. Um, yeah, because like you're never the, expecting that. <laughs> no, I I wasn't expecting that either. It was like the the meme of the guy in the mirror, like, why are you like this? Yeah. And it was just, her her like computer assistant was like, you told I I told you not to do this, and then you told me that you were doing it, but that. I couldn't tell you about it and I tried to give you hints and her just slowly having this realization of like, oh, oh. oh. Okay. I see what I did there. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was interesting though because that, that one we learned that the reason that she tampered with her own memory was to remove herself from Alethea's life because she tampered Alethea's memory so that they could still be together. Was that mm -hmm. it? I think. Yeah, though, yes. She, like, kept trying to fix her memory. So, like, I think and I think they mentioned they did it. She did it 16 times, like, when they first were together. Okay. And so I think they, when um, Aletha realized that, they were like, we can't be together. So she felt so bad. Then she deleted all her memory so she could never have this experience again. Right, 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 right. Jordan or Julian. The Jordan? One of those two. <laughs> the assistant feller was like, or they were like, hey, you have to go out here and meet this person. Go on a vacation. I got your new clothes. Go wear them. <laughs> yeah. Take a day off. Yeah. Oh, and then like the unexpected twist that Alethea is like this mastermind scientist responsible for this drug that like, Ooh, or multiple remake. drugs. Yeah, that like brings people's memories back or- The rewind, lost. rewind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or re, rewind, re, never mind, something re, like that. Re, never mind, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like um, remix, rewind, re, never mind. They were used a couple of ways. I know, like, and then there was dreams and there was old memories and it's like a lot of very like vague, but terminology is like explained in a sci-fi way which was a really good intro to how the rest of the book was going to go because it just got progressively weirder, mm -hmm. but we were really thrown into it with the terminology and everything in the first one. Yeah. <laughs> Christine, I love that you're just in separate rooms right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't read it, but whatever. <laughs> love you. Oh, oh yes. It's, it's just dark now. That's it. That's the hair. <laughs> Like here it is. I know. I spent all weekend because I was uh, in Arizona at a bachelorette party um, in the pool. So hopefully the chlorine didn't just destroy my hairstylist's new work. But I'm sure yeah. it's fine. It's fine. Exactly from the next room. <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> so the memory librarian story randomly reminded me of an episode of a '90s. Britcom called Murder Most Horrid, but I'm probably the only person with that weird connection. Please explain. What I that need is. further information. I know, like this sounds like exactly the kind of thing I would watch. So enlighten us, please. Yes. If we were only going to read one of them, which one should we read? Um one of the time boxes, I think from our ranking, we would be. In agreement but for christine would, specifically what do you think so christina is she's been recently getting into like the thriller i would think i would go with time box the og time box uh-huh but i'm also thinking she might just prefer the memory librarian overall just you know? the, for the vibes it has great atmosphere i was like yeah. immediately very unsettled by the memory librarian yeah, I think that one I might be because it's like it's got a little bit of romance, a little political intrigue, you know. It's kind of like Red Rising when you think about it. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. What's the, the difference? <laughs> when you really boil it down, Christine, it, Red so Rising, Memory yeah. Librarian. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Let's see. Any other thoughts on the Memory Librarian? The as a story? No, I, I think I think we said it, but I'm trying to think. I, I just really appreciate, again, 
the world that she built there. Cause I was like, okay, I can see what the new Dawn does kind of, I get the job description. I'm assuming it's taken over the whole America, like in this dystopian future. Cause there's yeah, a which- miraculous chapter. They hint at that because they're like, we're going to give you this promotion in Minneapolis. Yeah. So then it makes me think like, oh, this is just everywhere now. Yes. Um, the one thing that it immediately made me think of was 1984, the way that they're, I mean, it, in this book, they're oh, like yeah. literally auditing and wiping people's memories. And in 1984, it's like just uh, <laughs> like manipulation and saying that's not true. No, no, you don't remember that. That's that's not what happened. Uh, and very much gaslighting, girl bossing their way into like controlling the reality. Um, but that was the same feel of like the people in power being like, "Oop, that memory, we don't like it. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna get rid of it. That memory or that situation is a threat to this like mask of peace and prosperity and harmony." that we have arbitrarily created for the privileged majority. Anything else? Get it out of here. You mentioned 1984 and I got a little bit of do androids dream of electric sheep just because of like how D or Deidre was brought up and like, right. Like the whole like hierarchy of like this government agency. I'm like, okay, I can see. Okay, that, yeah, I like that comparison a lot, too. Yeah. The whole bit with her, um, like, AI assistant was really strange because she has this, like, a, an emotional connection. She's like, oh, I feel bad for turning it off at night. And then later, it's like the robot, like, told all of her secrets to her superior because yeah. it was just running endless in the middle of the night, uh, which raises the question of, like, androids and ethics and yeah. artificial intelligence yes i was like okay i see what's happening here janelle <laughs> oh i was excited go janelle what and then star. Never mind me. <laughs> it starred dawn french and it made fun of cozy british mystery series and each episode was a totally different story the one in particular had a woman who time traveled to try to not kill her husband after she got out of jail for killing her husband, but kept making it worse, so she kept having to tamper. I mean, the timeline. That I'm, sounds like a great show. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. Anything that kind of makes fun of like the typical tropes gets me every time. I feel that the Andy Sheep. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Blade Runner. <clears throat> Okay, what was the next one? Our least favorite one? Never mind. Yeah. Never okay. mind. Okay. We kind of we kind of did an overview. What do you feel like what do you feel like it was trying to do? I felt like it was it was I, honestly, if it, it felt like they were like bringing in all these women or all these um people that were considered like dirty and putting mm -hmm. them in the special, like, they like, we can make our own special place, but then they couldn't, they couldn't see, like, what to do about, like, how to, like, include other people that, you know, we, they also considered to hate them. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, it yeah. felt like, so I was like, it was interesting to see, like, how you can start including people that you wouldn't normally want to be a part of your club or, like, part of your community, but... I don't know. I felt like I was trying to do a lot, and that was one like, was it. trying to do a lot. Yeah, just pick one thing. I don't know, <laughs> like a couple of things. I don't know. Yeah, because you have Jane, who's like the reluctant leader of the commune, mm -hmm. and Jane is like, we should be a safe space for everyone. And even exactly. though this person, um, not sabotaged, but like, what's the word? Like popped out of nowhere and tried to like surprise. Yeah, yeah. Ambush. <laughs> ambush. This random person, person tried to come in ambush, and um, what was their name? Near, like, tied them down and like hid them away, like they were gonna try and get answers. And Jane comes in and is like, "Why would you do that? They didn't yeah. consent to being tied down." And it's like, "Well, they were gonna, they were gonna hurt everyone here." Like, yeah. What do you mean? Um. So there's like, 
it seems very black and white the way that they've tried to build this commune and yet there's this like us and them they've tried to create of like well we came here we deserve safety because we were deemed dirty even though other people have also been deemed dirty but for our safety we just have to keep like keep the walls up yeah. and it's like okay so which is it like i it's don't like, understand like what I, what is the reason? You literally said it perfectly. Like that is what my brain was trying to say. <laughs> like what? Like Jew decides so we can root for something. <laughs> there was um so like the one who ended up being like the sneaky villain of that story. What was her name? It was not Patricia, but that's the name that came into my head. It was like I think I, I feel like oh Rhapsody. That sounds right. I feel like it was Rhapsody, but. Cause that was the that was the, the person they the, kidnapped or like kept there. That there was, was no bat. Bat was the one that was like the blush hound that they yeah. kept there, and then was like, "Oh, I might join you," but there was someone from the inside that didn't like near, and so then was trying to like sabotage them and be like, "Oh, you don't belong here. You're making this an unsafe place for." us women and it was like what like do you hear yourself like what yeah. are you talking about your <laughs> actions have made this unsafe by <laughs> by like being the saboteur um and jane is like can we all just love each other and be happy and all be lovers and it, i don't know i felt yeah, like that one was very odd was like this hotel does not seem like the place right now <laughs> oh, yeah i don't know that one it, it felt long too it know. did, and I feel like it was on the shorter side, but I felt like I was reading it forever. Yeah, that one was the hardest one for me to get through, which make doesn't make sense because the setting, again, pink on the album was just so fun and like... Yeah, that's one of my favorite ones off the album. But maybe that was on purpose. Maybe that's why, like, you know, not everything's going to be a party all the time. Something right, happened. like it, it, it looks fun and perfect from the outside, but it's like very ominous and messy on the inside. Yes, so I'm like, okay, it's okay. <laughs> We've really got our like literary analysis pants on today. I know. I'm like, all right, <laughs> where <laughs> we're really writers... sinking in? <laughs> Let's pull up the lyrics and really dissect. <laughs> yeah, and and in this line we have. <laughs> I feel like I need my whiteboard with the red strings. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just so fun to have like a music album and a book that bounce off of each other. Like I don't know that that's really been done very many times. And that's probably because not a lot of musical artists are writing books. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jan Janelle Monet is just a treasure of a person, I guess. Yeah. This book is honestly a treasure when I think about it. But we'll get to that at the end. But. <laughs> what do you, okay. Next one is. Is the next one time box or? Yes, my favorite. Okay, I, my favorite too, pretty much. Then, and also the one that I have the most questions about. Yes, me too. I'm like, okay, we're gonna figure this out together. So yeah. <laughs> time yes. box, we have Raven and Aquila, right? Uh huh. They just moved to this apartment, and they're, um, you know, Raven's just busy. She's got a lot of things. That she's gotta do. She's just tired all the time. Uh -huh. Akila is just chilling at home, really. She's got a part time job, not really doing too much to, uh, with Raven's point of view. Right. Which I thought was interesting to see them as like having this long term relationship, but then clearly having this like unresolved tension of like Raven is always tired because she feels like she's always doing everything and Akila is like you never have time like why don't you let yourself rest yeah um so there's already that underlying tension and then the landlord makes this weird comment of like oh well there was two apartments open but I gave you this one because I thought that you could use it wink and Raven is like what the fuck does that even mean yeah, like, like I don't understand like, thank you the, the balcony looks great or something <laughs> right awesome patio <laughs> nice how does she figure out the weird thing with the pantry? She's like listening. She's putting groceries away or something. Yeah, she's listening to like a podcast or some radio show she always listens to. And then she like realizes that she's been doing a, like she listened to a whole thing or something. It's something with that. And then it's like suddenly 
midnight. Oh, like she she walks out of the pantry and realizes that the pot of water isn't boiling yet. Yeah, it was like sitting there the whole time. She's like, right. oh, "What just happened?" And I like looks at the time, and no time has gone by. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I was like, "Okay, I like this." Yeah. So like weird, mysterious, time frozen pantry, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, which mean I feel like must mean that the landlord knew about it, has but to. then has to right. But then when when she explains it to Akila, it it's like oh this huge secret like we should keep it for ourselves like set some boundaries let's figure out what what to do, and Akila feels very much give it to the uh, world high and mighty like no people can use this this is like such a resource I'm gonna write a manifesto about it. Um, then what happens? Then they have a fight. I always, I felt the part that really stuck out to me is that they were having such an argument. So the next day they get the note from the neighbor and she felt like really ashamed that they like heard the oh, fight yeah. down below. And then I think that after they go to work, I think she's at school and she realizes that, no, that's the next day. So then she goes to work, she comes back, she tells Akila like, hey, we need to set the boundaries. A lot uh-huh. of them, they think they agree. But at this time, Akila has already used the room and is like feeling the effects. Of the oh, room. right. Yeah, she just like feels tired and kind of like agrees and goes along with it. Yes. Okay. Like, but she, yeah, but because she, she's not really paying attention to what's happening because she's, yes. So I thought that was interesting. Then it turns out she's throwing the whole manifesto and then they have another fight. Oh, yeah, because someone told Raven at work, like, oh, I read what Akila wrote. It was, like, so amazing. That's so yeah. crazy. That That's a thing. And Raven plays along like she knew about it the whole time and how amazing it is. And then leaves, personally reads it for the first time and realizes, oh, she just wrote this whole thing publicly for all to see about their <laughs> time-frozen pantry after <laughs> yeah. they just agreed that they would keep it private and set that boundary. Yeah. Okay, so that was the then the second fight. And yeah. then Raven comes home and there's sawdust shavings and a new padlock. That's the part where I'm like, so Raven makes Akila agree to all these demands. Like she's like, I'm tired all the time. Like you don't help me out with the apartment. I'm tired. You help me. And she's like, okay, I'll talk to the landlord and we'll get everything settled. So then yeah. she goes home, the house is immaculate. The dishwasher's fixed, but the landlord's in the house. And I'm like, okay, this isn't explained very well, but I'm still enjoying it. But then the doorknob, what about the doorknob? Like the weight shavings and the doorknob. It's not, I don't, it's not a clear picture in my head. Because the landlord is like, oh, I asked, I asked that, or Akila asked that I, I would take care of this in yeah. response to like the new shaving and the doorknob and the new lock, which is like, did Akila lock herself in Into the pantry? pantry? That's what I feel like happened. Like, I think she trapped herself in there, like in the time box. But I'm like, who has the key? This, when like, it's very interesting. I don't know. I feel like that's what happened because she was trying to open it, right? Raven? Yeah. yeah. Because she came home and her like favorite signature meal is cooking. And it's like, oh, like Akila makes this every once in a while. Like she knows it's my favorite. The house is perfectly clean. But there's like a lock on the pantry and Akila is nowhere in sight. Which I, that's got to mean that she locked herself in there. On purpose. Like she asked her to do that. But why though? But why? Like I. Like does that. Like, she'd still be alive, just frozen in time? Also, yeah, what like, is the reason? But, like, how does that... So, pretty much, she got dumped, right? Is that... That's how I, I was, like... Raven's I, locked, yeah. Raven's locked out of there. So, like... It's just a... She just kind oh, of... Oh, I see. Right? Okay, so, either Akila is in the pantry or not. But the important <laughs> thing is that there is a locked door... <laughs> 
in between them. Exactly. And, and Raven can't get into the time box at all. And Aquila's nowhere to be seen. Yeah, that feels like a that feels like a big metaphor for a breakup, I think. Yeah. Because there's also this part of the story where maybe they for both. a second. Okay, what's the epiphany? Maybe it was like a thing about ghosting. You know? Oh. Like Okay. But I don't know. I don't know. It what could be. Because at some point, I think it's when the guy approaches Raven and is like, did you see what Akilah wrote? And Raven's like, what are you talking about? And then she has this moment where she's like, I would look back on this moment as like the the peak of my week where I should have seen it all coming or something. There's yeah. like one paragraph where she's like reflecting and then it's back to like the normal story. When it's like, wait, wait, what is the culmination of the week? Is like they have these big fights. Raven feels like, she doesn't have any help. She doesn't feel seen or supported. There's a whole thing like getting locked out and Akilah is just like brushes it off. Like it was no big deal. And then Akilah is like, Oh, we're growing in completely different directions. Mm -hmm. And like, we're going to like snap and break. It's gotta be a breakup. Right. I think it would. Yeah. And I think, I think the landlord was like, Hey honey, like, um, <laughs> I don't want you to be alone in this, but, um, <laughs> There's some news. So I think it's a breakup, which is a horrible way to break up with someone. You're just going to walk out of the pantry with nothing changed, but like, like I don't know. Yeah. I f mm. Maybe I, like I have more questions than before. You know? I, I was really sitting with this one. I was like, okay, first of all, like I was understanding that Raven came from like, Raven was like living with the mindset of like how many treasure survive. And like, I feel like, isn't Aquila like rich or like had rich parents or something? Something like that. Like they lived on like this big piece of land or like yeah. I, her father was rich or something like that, I think. But like Raven didn't really understand like the, not cause of a work, but like she just, everything just kind of, they had just distinctly different mindsets. And I just feel like it yeah. has to be like. A, a sad story for this couple. Like this is just like I, like there's no way this is like it was clearly ended like open ended, but the relationship's over in my opinion. Like there's like Aquila's gone. Right now I'm thinking like was it happy or sad? Well, it wasn't happy. So if it was sad, is it? It's like heartbreak. Whether yeah. whether she lost the time box or Aquila or both, it's like heartbreak and loss. Mm -hmm. it's the wood shavings that really got me I was like what about these wood shavings I know like what a strange detail to throw in there and then have it be like oh this is what was asked of me I think it meaning that it, it, it was new like it wasn't that she just didn't notice before like it had just been done yeah Oh, Sahar popped in. Hi, Sahar. <laughs> She's like, haven't read it, just saying hi. Yeah. She closed the metal lid with finality and fastened the latch. Closing the front door behind her. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, time about this one. That is a trip. Huh. <laughs> But we have more. If anyone reads, comment down below. I know. Please help me make sense of this. <laughs> I don't know if me reading it, I understood, but like, that's the vibe I got. I was like, I interpreted this this way. I was like, hey. yeah, I, I think that's probably as close as we're going to get, but that makes more sense to me than when I read it earlier. But I still, it still is so open ended. Yeah. What was then? It was n n not never change. Safe changes. Oh change. yeah. Safe changes. Safe that... changes. Yeah. Which was cool that we got some like time time manipulation. Mm hmm. And there's was... this constant countdown of like tw hours as the story goes on. Mm hmm. I probably should reread that one to figure out what is going on. 
But that one had a weird ending too. That one, I think I like this one too because I like the ones where like the stakes are like, mm -hmm. you know, they're like they pull the rug out from under you at the end. Like those are my kind of endings. But Save Changes was good because um, I really am blanking our main character, Larry and Amber. Amber. Okay, Amber. Amber and Larry. So Amber has her, their dad has like mined these stones mm -hmm. that have the ability to, you can use it once to, to fix the timeline. Uh -huh. So something happens where they're at the block party and it's just a bunch of, she's like, when can I, when should I like use my stone? I can fix all of this. And then, you know. Larry's like, don't worry about it. Or not, not don't worry about it, but it's like, what can we do? Like, these are our actions. These are, it's how I felt at least. Yeah. But the, it was really the the plot of the mom that was like, whoa. That and, was a hoot. Yeah. yeah was she, like, whoa. Because their mom, that's how, that's how Amber learns how her dad used his one chance with the stone. Mm -hmm. Because their mom was this like very famous rebel Mm -hmm. uh, and then finally got caught, had her memories wiped, and then was supposed to be the poster child for New Dawn, like, reform. Mm -hmm. But but then kind of something was shaken loose in her brain, and she's, like, chopping dish towels for dinner. Yeah. And, like, just, like, doing these, like, obviously unhinged actions so that she's just, like, monitored from a distance in their own home. She's, like, deemed not a harm to anyone. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, oh, like, our dad died. Mom is not the same person she once was. Like, what do we do? Why didn't dad ever use the stone? Uh, and then somehow, like, Larry is arrested trying mm -hmm. to save or talk to her girlfriend after the block party raid. And um, then Amber's going to use the stone to go back and rescue Larry and her mom like snaps out of it, covers the surveillance camera and is like, okay, we don't have much time. Like I've always been here. This is how your dad used the stone. And she's like, whoa, so that she could keep her normal brain and just kind of have to fake it under the radar that she did actually have her memories wiped. But then she uses the stone and what happens? I like think, it was all a dream? No, I think she, I think like it changed, but it didn't change for the better. Right? Like didn't the raid just happen in a different place? Or did I get that wrong? I think it still happens. But I thought but it they, happened, happened to them instead of at like at the event. Like it still happened to them. Right? I can't tell if I'm frozen or you're frozen. Oh, I might. I can hear you. Oh, oh perfect. Okay. I'm, I might have just been my internet. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like the raid still happens, but they, like, Amber knows that it's going to happen. Like, she gets Larry back. Like, Larry is, like, coming down the stairs or something about to go to the block party. And Amber's like, whoa, 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 we have to be smart about this. But there's, like, something with her mom at the end, too. Yeah, because I don't understand the time's up part. I know, like the hourly countdown is what's what's getting me. Oh, maybe that's where they reset it. So it opens with 12 hours left. Because the magic rock lady is like, oh, you don't really know how much time it's going to give you back. I, I think that's it. Oh, I, you're right. Because I think it resets. Like the place it resets is like the very beginning where it says 12 hours. And it's a countdown to when she uses the stone. Because that, after... Where's the last one? Oh, well, yeah. Because isn't, isn't that where she was at the crosswalk at the beginning? Yeah. But that part already had happened, but I don't know why Diana said that. Okay, so that's like a recording. So Diana is their mom. It's yeah. coming back to me. Diana is their mom. So Amber uses the stone and it's like 
that time 12 hours before and they're like whoa whoa we know that a raid is going to happen we have to direct it away from that place towards somewhere else and we need to disappear okay. so it because they're talking about a raid happens at their home but no one is there and there's just this loop on the tv of diana oh. doing, during her act of like lights on no one's home um just like holding up a clock as like a code a dead watch okay because they're talking they like harder. redrew the map because amber was given that map of like all the safe houses so yeah. in their like 10 minutes before the raid happened they like drew the map they're like okay let's make a plan we need to go to like a safe house or something and then the raid happens at their home yes that makes sense home trying to light on <laughs> i know it's getting dark here too it's like summer's almost over no. a new person <laughs> should do that too let's see um i feel like talking through that just made that one make a lot more sense for me it did i was like some of these i really do need to ask because i'm like am i <laughs> oh the next one is your favorite time box altered yes, yes. That one I liked was it because it just was like such a different tone from the rest of them. It was like yeah. hopeful and the rest were like very ominous. Yes. This one, I was like, I was trying to make sure I was like, what's going to happen? Like something sad is going to happen tragically, but no, it kept, it kept the theme of optimism and like the dreams. I really like the dreams, like how, like artists, you know, how they have to be imaginative. It's dream of a better future. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I look like I was really okay. Yeah. yeah, they so we have these four kids who end up in this like strange forest. Yeah. And they find this person mix Tangi. Mm -hmm. And um she's telling them like, oh, it's carve your name into these stones and go meditate uh, near the stones and the the youngest of all of them is like okay and yeah. then goes like has this vision and but also like completely disappears while they're having this vision and so the kids are like oh my god where did they go what's happening yeah and then bug comes back and is like i just had a great time i was with my mom and we were doing some art and it was great. And then convinces the rest of the kids to go in alone and also have these visions. And then separately, they each get like a glimpse of their future, mm -hmm. um, and, which is like so different from like their current realities. Yeah. And it, it plants this very like profound hope and inspiration in each of them. It was well done. That one was like, it was not what, because Time Box was such a, a depressing yeah. end for me. So I was like, what is this? But then it makes sense. Altered, altered with an A, like, you know, like an altar. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I see what y'all are doing. Y'all are on like level Clever. 2000. Like, <laughs> I wasn't even prepared for that twist or like that kind of change in tone. It was. It really like sticks out so much from the rest, and I like that we ended on that one. Um, that it was like these kids who are kind of like scrappy and ha are just just trying to like survive, and then each of them is like, oh, if I just continue on and have hope, then all of these amazing, beautiful things will happen. Like one of them is like has this vision of his sick father and grandfather like in the picture of health and he's like what you're not sick anymore are you dizzy yeah. and they're the dad is like what are you talking about i had the best doctor around wink wink meaning like it was him and yeah. he needed to become a doctor and that which i was like oh am i about to cry no, no you're crying but it's like such a such a special one and then the other one found herself in the middle of this like new metropolis and someone almost runs her over. And it's like, oh, oh sorry, no. sorry, Madam Mayor. And she's like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, mayor. Um, yeah, and it's like the city that she founded where everyone is like healthy and cared for. 
um, and it's not ran by fear like New Dawn. Um, and she's like, oh, I guess I need to go study city planning. Yeah. <laughs> what were the other two? It was the siblings. One was an artist and one was just like a like a father, family man. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I remember like I'm going artist had Oh artist, yeah. Yeah, I was like I was like, is it artist? Yes, yeah, artist. <laughs> Cause he was almost like insecure about not having a thing where the other three also all had like their things. Yeah, that I was like, I remember him having like that breakdown scene in the arc and he was like trying so hard to like go and fix it because he was like I didn't have the like experiences that y'all had mm -hmm. on your trips and then bug I like that the youngest is like like oh like you know we have to listen like we can't like he like already had an understanding like this is how you're supposed to, we're supposed to stay here and then these things will happen to us and I'm like listen to the young people I know that that like sweet little nugget oh and they were the ones that like really bonded with um miss their Tangy. their like shaman yeah mix tangy and then she's like oh no they're they're coming for me i have to i must go now but like a bird i will return and everyone except for bug is like what did she say yeah <laughs> bug is like exactly bug is like um i, I don't have heard but they're gonna come back when it's right time. so we have to stay here and mm. we can't leave <laughs> they were like, no. <laughs> what? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, and then the ending of that one is they like run back into the forest. Everything is gone. Like there was a storm or something, but there's this new small child that has a letter. Do you remember this? The birthday card? Yeah. It's like there's like some random I didn't random realize new another whole other person. I thought Artists yeah, I which was that. like, is that supposed to be mixed tangy? Oh, you're right. Yeah, no, it says you're right because I thought that, and I was like, that I must be thinking wrong, and I was like, well, no, it's like right at the end. It says Bug was the first to see the new child. They stared in astonishment. The boy, not much taller than Bug, stood in the grassy field, dressed in oversized white majorette boots with bright orange pom poms, oh. spinning a railroad spike. Like, is that supposed to be mixed tangy? So. Yes. Because Bug's the one that was looking for the bird to return. So it'll make sense for Bug to notice, right? If we think about it. If we think about it. But some of these things aren't aren't really spelled out. So I know. Yeah. And then the birthday card is weird because it's it's Bug's birthday card, but also for addresses everyone. all three of the other kids. Yes. Yeah. Like this is so. Is it from Bug's mom or is it from Mixed Tangy? <laughs> Can't be sure. And then the end is just Bug. It says we remember Bug thought. Then they ducked under the canopy of forest. The others following and let the dark green radiance embrace them. And that's the end of the book. Yeah, it was well done. Oh yeah, I I really liked ending on that one. The ending was good. I, mean, I I like this book because there's not a lot of I don't know I feel like there's not a lot of main character like that are like these characters like all from these short stories and they all seem unique in their own way. Yeah, I like that. I like that it was so like all types of people like from all over the place and had such unique different backstories mm -hmm. and it never felt like we were getting flashbacks or exposition dumps. But yet I know one thing it's amazing that we both like remembered everyone's names. That yeah, happened. that is. That's very impressive. <laughs> and also like all of their histories um, is clear in my mind. Like it's not really blurring together at all. Yeah, it's really the futures that we are like, like what, what's gonna happen to them? Except right. I'm altered. <laughs> I'm yeah, off. yeah, because we, we saw the visions of the future. Yeah. <laughs> The rest is a big mystery. But, yeah, well, uh, I'm sorry to you, Raven. Don't know, don't know what happened to you there. I know. Yeah, that was that was a bummer. But yeah, um, I'm gonna have to more thoroughly listen to the album now that we have thoroughly unpacked the book. 
because it's a it's a jam but i haven't really like sunk into it as much as i want to yeah i was trying to like do i was like i was trying to do that like trying to like dive in a little more but i was like some of these are just on on its surface just a fun time you know right i know i need to like look probably read the lyrics so i don't get fooled by the <laughs> by like the poppy tunes i need to watch some of her like her talking about like how they made it yes and, like, figure out so because i was like i just need to understand like the overarching vision of I know. are they gonna make are there gonna be like screen adaptions do you know That's i don't know but that would be awesome that would be the holy yeah. trinity she'd have a music album a novel and like a visual like tv production or something that would be amazing i feel like it has to be there's just no like especially for memory librarian that one seemed the most likely to me but like everybody yeah. like if, maybe if it's like a tv show or something you can just kind of have all these kind of like places in this universe right like a mini series or something like yeah kids time traveling i don't know yeah the yeah the pink hotel <laughs> yeah uh yeah that one has a song and everything already i can see the theme song yeah mm-hmm mm -hmm. wow um any other thoughts or questions, concerns from the peanut gallery or from you? No, I liked it. Four stars. Yeah. It's, I don't read a lot of short stories, but I feel like this is at least, I mean, that's like the majority, right? If you like three of them. Yeah, I know it was for a short story collection. There was only five. They were like longer short stories. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. It's pretty solid. I've read like a handful of short story collections, and it's probably on, on one of my favorites of the ones that I've read. Yeah, I don't read that many, so it'll probably be number one for a while. I bought one recently. <laughs> I'm blanking on the name, but it was like like something with cabin A or something. I'll send you the later later. <laughs> I don't remember the title. But I was, I was like, gonna say, like, did I see? Have you like talked about it yet or posted about it? I don't, I don't even know where I put it. So this is unhelpful. But it was like a cool cover because like the cover had like, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh man. Well, thank you for um, marathoning this today with me and unpacking on live. This is actually so great because I feel like now I actually get what happened in most of these. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I know. I was like, together, me and Noelle can figure this out. I was we like, collectively have two brain cells. Yeah. As I specifically were time box. I was like, I was like, I kept reading the end. I was like, man, I really hope that this is what I think it is. But yes, together, we did it. We did it. We did it. Um <laughs> powered powered through in the final hour. <laughs> Both of I us. Love that we're the same. We're like, we will be this. Birds of a feather. <sighs> oh, oh gosh. Like this. Wow. Well, um, that is it for Hawk Girl Book Club of July, now that we're in mid-August. Um, August, I'm reading Does My Body Offend You? And then talking about it with Catherine from Catherine Zofri, which will be a very Thank distinct you. shift. That is YA Contemporary from... <laughs> adult surrealist sci-fi stories so that'll yeah. be quite the quite the jump that sounds um cool. yeah should be a good old grand ball good old blasty blast yes um thank you to everyone that popped in and helped us unpack all of the all of the drama and thanks to monique for joining me and reading with me uh digging through all of the mysteries and we will see you very soon <laughs>